Hey, what's cracking everybody? On today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Rhino Linux. Rhino Linux version 2024.2. And you can see right here from its website that it comes in two versions. You have a uh, 86-64 and you also have a ARM 64. So it does come with a regular 86 uh, 64 bit system and it also comes for ARM systems. So obviously I downloaded the uh, 86-64 bit version. So that's the one I got up in the virtual machine right now. So uh, I'll go ahead and I'll put this link down in the video description. That way you can take a look at it yourself and you can go through all these, uh, all these little links right here. You got home, download, unicorn, blog, wiki, and pages. All right. And this is another video that was requested by a viewer. So that is the purpose of me looking at Rhino Linux 2024.2. So let's head on over to the uh, virtual machine and let's take a look at Rhino Linux. And we are here at the virtual machine, so it's time to get a uh, Rhino Linux installed. So what I'll do is I'll open the uh, applications and I'll do a search. I'll just type in install and you can see right here it comes up install Rhino Linux. So I'll go ahead and click on that and wait for the installer to open up. As of right now, I'm not sure as to what this is based on. I'm not sure if it's an Arch based, Ubuntu based, uh, you know, enterprise based. But uh, once we got it installed and all that, we'll go through it and figure it out. But right now, the language is selected as American English. Uh, America, Los Angeles is my location. That's correct. Click Next. Keyboard layout is set to English US default. Click Next. I will select Erase Disk, Swap the File, and EXT4. It's all to my liking. Click Next. And now I'll add my user info. And then I'll give it a strong and complicated password that's not one, two. And for the purpose of this uh, first look, I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in automatically. And that's about it. Here's an overview of everything that's going to happen. And let's get on with the installation. All right. So while this is installing, I'll go ahead and pause the video as I usually do. And when we reboot, we should be in Rhino Linux. Okay, and we are now rebooted into the system. It is fully installed right here, and we see we have a setup wizard that pops up. It does not pop up in full screen. It popped up like this. I just made it full screen before turning the camera on. But I just want to show you that real quick. And it says right here, let's start. So I'll click on it. All right, and right here, do we want to set up flat pack? I guess we could set up flat pack. Uh, it has options for the flat pack beta channel and for flat seal. So we'll just go ahead and click them all. Nix. And then we have Nix. And this is for Nix packages for like, from like Nix OS. Uh, snaps. I don't want any snaps and I'll leave app image alone. I'll just use the flat packs and the Nix. Now click on next. See Docker. I don't need Podman. Obtainer, Camu, VirtualBox. I can just skip all of these. Uh, extra settings, Nala. Nala is an alternative front end to app. I'm not worried about that. App board, Redshift. I'm not worried about none of these things. Go ahead and enter my uh, complicated password. That's not one, two. Okay, so setting all that up took actually a few minutes and it also forced me to uh, reboot the system. So just be aware of that. All right, so this looks like it's some type of a customized uh, GNOME system, I want to say. Uh, I mean, I could be very well wrong about that. It is Ubuntu-based. I know that uh, now that it is an Ubuntu-based system, and we do have a panel on top, and it's kind of set up the way uh, Mac sets up their panel. And this one right here, of course, has a system tray on the right where you have your uh, date and time, and then you have your computer. You have your volume control, you have your notifications, and then you have a pull down menu that has extra items. Well, in this case, it just has the internet or the network and Quartile. 
a toilet manager. All right, and then to the left of the top panel, you have your uh, your file options. So right here it says desktop, files, documents, music, pictures, video. So let's say, for example, let me open up uh, the terminal. It should have, yeah, it opens up the terminal options up here on the panel. It's kind of like uh, the way if it, if it was a, uh, a Mac, it's like a Mac theming setup right here, the way they have it installed. All right, and then this uh, button all the way on the far left is actually to log out or get out your system. And by looking at this, this looks like the XFCE um, logout screen. So this may be a modified XFCE uh, desktop environment. So hey, the more you know. It, it's meant to look like a GNOME, but then again, it has some uh, theming from uh, you know Apple. And then uh, it's telling me that it's XFCE by looking at the logout screen. But then again, I could be wrong. And then we have a dock right here. The dock has a U launcher, a application grid, a desktop switcher, Firefox stable, file manager, VS Codium, XFCE terminal, and your system. So we'll start off with this uh, application grid so you can take a look at it. And it's pretty much showing you all the applications. And I believe this is going to be Rofi. It's using Rofi to uh to produce this right here. And you have two pages. You can tell by the two dots down here. So if I click on the second page, you can see it's whatever applications that overflowed into the second page. And this is the first page. And pretty much these are all your applications right here. And to get out of here, just click anywhere on the screen. All right. But uh, we also have a U launcher right here. And it says, got a message, cannot create global shortcut. We're not worried about that. So right here, if you wanted to find an app, let's say, uh, for example, if they have GIMP, you would search for it. But if they don't got GIMP, let me try Thunar to see if this is, uh, yeah, see Thunar comes up. Because I know Thunar is an XFCE uh, file managing system. So yeah, this, this is the XFCE desktop environment. It's just heavily themed. And this is a uh, U-Launcher. Let me see if we can take a look at the settings. You got the new launcher preferences right here. You can start it at login. You can change the color theme. You can start each session with a blank query. You know, you can do a lot with it. All right. And we already saw the uh, application grid and the desktop switcher. Pretty much this is just to uh, get your desktop. So you got four separate desktops right here. So whichever one you click on is the one you're going to land on. So. In our case, we're just going to go to, to the top one because that's assumed that that's number one. And then below that, we have Firefox Stable. So I wonder if they're using a uh, a Debian type branch of Firefox. Updates available. We're going to dismiss that for now. We're going to go to the help and about and see what version of Firefox. And it is 129.0.2. I wonder why they call it Firefox Stable. Oh, well, this is a uh, Firefox nonetheless. All right, and below that we have File Manager, and let's see if it does. Yeah, it opens up Thunar. So that further confirms that this is the uh, XFCE desktop environment. And you can tell we have our desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, videos. And of course, to view the hidden files, there is nothing in the right click menu. You have to use Control H on your keyboard. And that way you'll be able to view all of your hidden files. Hit Control H again to hide them. All right. And below that we have VS Codium, which I'm sure is a fork of VS Code, I'm going to assume, which is a Microsoft app. This is a, you know, a glorified text editor is what I like to call them. But it, it's a, you know, to write your code. So, you know, you set up your uh, pages, you can search, set some queries, run debugs, pretty much do everything. It's a, you know, a, what do you call these? There's a specific name that's, a, it's a, eluding me right now. But uh, yeah, you get the gist of it. It's a code editor, basically. So you can run codes and you can test them out with this uh, one single app. And that was VS Codium. Below that, we have XFCE Terminal. Of 
course, being the XFCE desktop, it is the XFCE terminal. And I did confirm that this is a uh, Ubuntu base. So sudo app install htop should work. Give it a strong and complicated password. And it installs htop. And we can take a look at htop. Bigger. Huh. Well, the theme is not allowing me to make it bigger. So I'll zoom into this section right here. We're only using 800 plus uh, megabytes out of six gigabytes and all the averages are pretty low. Another thing I wanted to test on here is, uh, let me clear the screen. We did uh, install Nix packages and uh, what was it? Flat packs and Nix packs. Search more than 120,000 packages. So, man, let's try NeoFetch, the unmaintained app. <laughs> so, let's see, Nix Shell. I did Nix Shell the last time. So, now let's try, okay, on non Nix OX without flakes, with flakes. So, this is kind of confusing, it gives you a lot of options. Again, it doesn't allow me to copy, so I have to go Control C. I'll go ahead and minimize this. Open up the terminal again. Do a paste. Okay, that looked like it installed. Let me go ahead and clear. And Neo Fetch. Hmm, there you go. So I got a few setups that are not working on here. Anyways. I'll just make it bigger on the uh, video editor right here. You got Rhino Linux 2024.2, the kernel 6.10.7, and you got the rest of the information all along here. All right. Oh, went through all of Oh, we didn't go through your system. So let's take a look at our system. Can this be made bigger? We can't. I'll just leave right there. Board, a known chip, gives you your hardware info, your memory, your disk, GPU, kernel, desktop, unicorn, and right here, it is confirmed, XFCE, and operating system, Rhino Linux, 2024.2 mainline. All right, that's pretty much uh, all we need to look at. I mean, everything else is pretty much relevant uh, as far as uh, applications on here. You got pretty much everything. You got XF Burn, U Launcher, you know, you got your task managers, you got your display settings, you know, and you can always just use sudo app to install whatever you need to install. Yeah. Then you do have your media player, so you will probably just want to install some type of office software on here and you'll be fully set. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Just a quick look at Rhino Linux. Quick first look at Rhino Linux for uh, for one of the comments that I got. He actually wants me to look at three systems. I looked at Tramjaro a couple days ago. Today I'm looking at Rhino Linux. And in a few days or so, I'll take a look at the third system. All right, just gonna do it for this video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And uh, please go ahead and leave me a comment. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for this video, and I'm out.